Tonight's speaker, Bart, is a fierce formalist. He's an unrelenting experimenter who has developed a unique typographic attitude that has influenced designers around the world. His work spans the entire cultural sector for clients in the fields of art, music, performance, and film. A few of his clients include the Am Amsterdam Club Paradiso, cultural centers such as W139, De Apple, and the New Institute. When he graduated from the Rietveld Academy in 2003, he was immediately drafted to work on Arcus Magazine with Daniel van der Velden and Maureen Moran, which was a highly influential architecture magazine and kind of a highly influential graphic design um, publication. Uh, when browsing his portfolio, you'll see that Bart presents the sophisticated projects he does for clients side by side with casual flyers and invitations to his next birthday party, suggesting a holistic persona that does not distinguish between life and art. He is well known for his self-initiated projects, including Dark and Stormy, an ambiguous fanzine he publishes with Rustin Soderling, and Success and Uncertainty, um, a poster series and publication made with Sandra Kassanar during an artist residency in Cairo amid the chaos of 2011's Arab Spring. He teaches graphic design at both the Garrett Rietveld Academy in Amsterdam and the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague, and he conducts workshops throughout Europe. So, super happy to welcome Bart DeBatz. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, very nice to be here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Emmett, and thank you very much uh, to uh, the Walker and the staff that I uh, got to meet over the last few days. Uh, it's very nice to be here, and I'm looking forward to uh, introduce you to my work. Um, I should also say that I'm actually a little bit, ner a little bit nervous, and I'm not such a. I, I, I don't really, I don't really uh, lecture much about my work, so um, it's quite intimidating to to stand here in front of you all, um, uh, not being a native speaker, uh, and you all are. So, uh, um, but my English is just fine, and I'm sure I'll survive. Um, uh, what I what I what I tried to do uh, when I was um, collecting images going on, when I was collecting my work uh, uh, to prepare for this lecture is um, um, is show a certain kind of is, is show a certain kind of feature that accidentally uh, always uh, bumps up in my in in my work, which basically is uh, a bottom line. There always is. Not, not always, but very often is a certain kind of very simple um, stripe at the bottom of a, a poster, a, a stripe at the bottom of a page or a flyer, um, on which typography, typography seems to fall on. So it's almost as if there is a certain kind of three-dimensionality in, in, in the work, which, is some, which I try to somehow solve in a two-dimensional way. And I use that coincidence I was actually quite stunned when I saw when I saw that that bottom line is such a frequent, a frequently appearing uh, thing in my work, um, almost as if, um, yeah, I was actually a little bit a little, little bit shocked about it, but I decided to sh uh, share that with you with you guys and um, and try to show you the many different ways I um, apply this bottom line. So don't expect some kind of like a heavy statement, some kind of Truth about my work, some kind of like um, simple one line one liner like Bart Bats his work is about this and that. It's very simple. It's a simple stripe at the bottom of a page on which <laughs> things fall upon apparently, and um, and I, I will use this bottom line to introduce you to a bunch of other works. And my idea is uh, my idea is very simple. I would like to go uh, over the work quite fast. There's a, there's a, um, I, I want to show you a lot of work. I want, I wanted this lecture to be very, vi very visual. And some of the works I just want to talk about very quickly. And there's a bunch of other projects that I want to go into a little bit deeper. Um, and it could be, I, the, the, the things that I haven't really prepared, I haven't really rehearsed, I haven't really um, done the lecture um, and timed it. So it could be really long, but, um, uh, but I hope not. I hope not because I honestly, I have the attention span of a five-year-old, and uh, I could not sit through lectures that are actually longer than forty-five minutes. So I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of bear with you guys and uh, 
sort of maybe it's maybe it's fine if you all do signs that like, like um, if if I am talking too too long. Next slide, maybe. Um, uh, this is uh, an old work, uh, and this is uh, an invitation I made for uh, an exhibition space in Amsterdam called W139. And this is where I so this is where I've enjoyed this. This is where I somehow discovered this this idea of the bottom line. I really this uh, this um, flyer this exhibition was about struggling. Was was the work of Daphne Maimon, a Finnish uh, artist, who is very interested in um, amateur uh, actors, uh, struggling actors, and so I had this idea to make. Uh, to make typography that somehow refers to um, your name and lights and uh, name and lights sort of uh, the letters that you often see on uh, front side on, on facades of uh, theaters how, how they sometimes f sort of fall out of the how they sometimes fall out and that somehow is a nice is a nice sort of metaphor to the, the struggling actor so I just made these letters fall onto this very simple plain uh, bottom line that the uh, bottom of the page. Uh, it's an old work, and uh, some, but it's, a, it's an important work for me. I, I, managed, to make a, I managed to make a lot of different uh, typographical, typographical experiments, and I got to do that quite uh, like, uh, every six weeks. I had to make an, a new, new flyer, so it was a, a great opportunity for me to make a lot of, a lot of work. Um, so it might be yeah, uh, here, here I'm. So it's it's again this bottom line. Um, this is a a, um, a poster I made for an event in Paradiso. Paradiso is a, a quite a famous uh, a pop music venue, like a concert venue in the center of Amsterdam. And this event, um, if I was a sculptor, but then again, no, um, was an opportunity for artists, uh, like uh, visual artists, to show their Music, music aspirations. There's a lot of uh, uh, visual artists in the world that, next to their artist career, um, make music or try to make music, and they're good artists. And then that doesn't always mean that they're good, good musicians. <laughs> but still, the, um, Paradiso um, decided that it was a good idea to create some kind of platform for uh, these amateur musicians, and so. My idea basically was to combine the sculpture with the hit. So this is what I made. And, and it was very much inspired by um, the, um, the work of two students, uh, Nora Halpern and Remy Alban, Alban Valton, who um, got the opportunity to design the, uh, the exhibition design for their graduation show at the Gerrit Rietveld Academy in Amsterdam. And what they did, uh, what they did was they took the they took them uh, they were very much inspired by the Ettore Sotza's uh, bookshelf and took those um, uh, boards apart and and gave uh, each uh, separate board as a as a package to all the graduating students for them to make for them to de uh, design uh, their own bookshelf on which they could uh, exhibit their their graduation works. And as I simply, yeah, simply stole that idea. <laughs> it's very much. I I just liked the way it looked, and um, and uh, as you can see here, so I tried to build these sculptures that somehow looked like Nora and Remy's uh, work, and I did that by um, making uh, simple um, two-dimensional sculptures with tape, as you can see here, and I scanned those. I made them, inverted them in Photoshop, and made them really black and white. And try to make all kinds of different setups, setups, different constructions that somehow opened up, that framed the the paper and provided a space for typography. So I did all these, all these things, all these sort of different tryouts. I'm just showing you four, but I made many more. And there was a second, a <laughs> second night uh, for uh, for the same um, purpose called Keskese. In this case, this is um, um, from the um, Psycho Killer uh, Talking Heads song. And this is a, post <laughs> a poster with two sides, basically. So the, the back read all the uh, short biographies on the, on the um, artists that were performing that night. 
Um, this project is um, uh, something I did quite recently. It's uh, called uh, One on One uh, Stelkamers, One on One Period Rooms. It's an exhibition in the, the new institute in Rotterdam. And uh, this, uh, this is a work by uh, Greek uh, architect Andreas Angelidakis, who was invited to uh, share his view on the transformation of uh, the period room. And the period room basically use, uh, was a, a living room situation in which, um, uh, in which art was, was shown. And uh, the period room uh, um, moved to the museum. Um, and in the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, uh, they, they showed these period rooms in, in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam too. And then in the 1970s, Willem Sandberg, who was the director of the Stedelijk Museum at the time, decided to paint the Stedelijk Museum, uh, Museum white, uh, with which he um, somehow initiated the white cube as we know it today, or or it basically shows these these six rooms show the transformation the transformation of the exhibition space as we know it today. And uh, so this is in the ground floor of the of the museum in Rotterdam in, in the Netherlands. And I was asked to uh, do the visual the identity for the for the exhibition. This is one of the rooms. So it's a very transparent setup that shows these different stages. And here you can see. Um, here you can see different parts of the f furniture from the older period rooms, um, providing a certain uh, see-through to the other other spaces. So basically, the rooms, as the the space outside the the rooms are, become be become part of one big installation. And when I started working um, on this exhibition, on on the design for this exhibition. Um, I was, uh, they sent me these images, these black and white images, which I immediately thought were very inspiring. They were somehow very visual and very, like, very, um, it gave me a lot of ideas. What I really liked about it is that um, they show like a very decor decor decorated uh, space. At the same time, they also show uh, hidden spaces. They also show uh, almost as if it somehow hides uh, as if it hides nothing, almost. It's like a, a, a walk through to, to another room. All kinds of uh, um, opportunities to show work. Uh, they create sort of uh, decorative uh, backgrounds for, uh, for 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 paintings or for for sculptures, but paintings mostly. Um, I think what I'm trying to say is that the images images that they sent me were very inspiring. Uh, so I made uh, a very simple um, sort of frame. Uh, frame um, framework, and my idea was to make black and white posters to make black and to make a black and white identity that shows a hint of color. So the idea was that I, that the inside of the posters would be very black and white, and that the outside shows these layers, these wallpapers, these hidden layers. Uh, so um, that, that's that's basically it. And here you can see again this idea of the bottom line. Perhaps a, a little bit less less uh, literal as, as as I showed it to you before, but here the the, the topography falls in the space, almost uh, like a tetri Tetris game. So this is a folder I made with a, a brochure that that goes um, with it for all the visitors to take with, and um, the thing on the on the right is a, another brochure. So it's a, it's kind of an it's a, it's a nice it's a the, it's an ongoing exhibition it's it's on on sh uh, on this uh, on display right now in, in Rotterdam, and the thing that you see on the that you see on the left is a is a simple uh, folded piece of paper to uh, um, an A4. But I I, I I think to talk about A4s and A A formats to you guys makes very little little sense. Um, um, so uh, uh, now that the exhibition is still on on, the, on display, I get to make all these small smaller um, publications, smaller things that are, that are that are inserted in uh, in this folder. Um, this is something I want to talk about very very quickly. This is the uh, the identity for 
uh, a small company called Our People, and um, Our, Our People basically is a um, uh, recruits um, students, uh, young people who um, want to work in the arts. So I, 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 made, I made up this uh, this simple um, a bunch of sp spirograph uh, looking images. Uh, I ordered one online because I, th I thought I thought I, I thought I would I, th I would make it by hand, um, but then I but then when I received it in the mail, I tried it um, and scanned it, and I was just as frustrated as I was uh, when I was a kid because I never really managed to make them look as beautiful as they looked on the package. <laughs> but then I was then I thought maybe this idea of frustration, this idea of making mistakes, is actually is actually interesting. Because it's such a perfect, beautiful shape, and it's actually really boring to make these pretty-looking, um, sort of flowery, uh, strange network-looking things. And I thought perhaps the mistake is the most interesting thing. And you could say that if you are uh, uh, recruiting for people to help you build up an exhibition or whatsoever, you're creating a certain kind of network, and this person that you're looking for is the missing link. So that's kind of the idea behind this. And the thing is that this, I, 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 I like, I like the way this looks. And I, I, although the idea might be slightly, slightly silly and perhaps a little bit cheesy, um, I like, I like the way it looks. And somehow I wish that the people from Art People would give me more work because, I don't know, it's just. Um, I think it's a good. I, th I, th I simply think it's a good idea. And then I just need to, need to. I would like to elaborate on what this identity could, could do for them. Um, this is a wine label I made for um, uh, a biological wine, far wine farmer in uh, Barcelona. And here I really try to, um, again, this idea of the bottom line, the three di there's a certain kind of uh, hunch of three-dimensionality and it's try to sort of stop it, try to sort of stop this idea of wheels in motion. and. That's it. This is this was um, this is wine made for a wedding, and I'm still waiting for them to send me uh, a box of wine, a box of wine because apparently it's it's uh, it's, it's uh, good wine. <laughs> Here you can see uh, the actual labels and uh, the bottle uh, at the wedding. So I got all these I got all these images, all these pictures sent to me, and I simply have I simply haven't been able to taste the wine myself, <laughs> which believe me, believe me I like. A good glass of wine. Uh, this is um, a poster uh, identity I made for an exhibition in the Apple in Amsterdam. Uh, the Apple has a curatorial program. They allow six people to uh, um, to uh, take part of it every year, and it's mostly people around the age of thirty, a little, a little bit, a little bit younger, uh, to do all kinds of exercises, trips, all kinds of uh, courses to become uh, curators or better, cu be better curators. And uh, in, this, in this case, uh, the exhibition was called Bourgeois Leftovers, and it was a collaboration with the Van Abbe Museum in Eindhoven, uh, a city in the south of the Netherlands. And uh, the Van Abbe Museum, uh, in their archives, or in their, in their archives, they had a big bunch of paintings that somehow never made it to the exhibitions. Those were somewhere um, not so popular uh, paintings. Perhaps they were a bit ugly. Perhaps they were a bit dusty. There were there was something about those paintings that somehow they, they just never made it to the shows. So the um, in this case it was six six girls. They decided to embrace those uh, leftover paintings and ask a bunch of uh, artists to work with these paintings to inspire a new work or to to combine it with another uh, already existing work and i quite liked i quite liked how i quite liked how open they were about this how how they somehow gave these um not so popular paintings a spot so i quite liked this fragile this fragile the fragileness of the whole of the whole thing so i made this very um breakable uh uh, set up uh, with, and with hyphen with the hyphens of the word leftovers I suddenly came to this strange uh, const construction of 
simple uh, black lines, or simple lines, and uh, pieces of uh, uh, of frames of uh, paintings. And so the construction that I made um, suddenly provided all kinds of spaces for topography, for content, and I quite liked how how white it was, how, how empty it was. So I got to make all these different things. These are all the artists. So these are the names of the the painters that were never um, that never made it to the show. And these are and these are also the names of the the contemporary artists who uh, worked with these paintings. This is the uh, a book I made. And I was I thought I thought this was the best thing of the whole uh, of the whole job because I really enjoyed building the I really enjoyed building these constructions I really built I really enjoyed it and I, what I really liked about it that this book cover did not need any did not need, did not need any typography I had to convince the girls because of course you want your name of the book on the cover but I I managed to do so and I think it results in in, in quite a mysterious strange uh, object these are some pages from the book with really big page numbers and this is uh, the Grote Amsterdamse Kunstkalender, the big, uh, the the big, as in the massive uh, Amsterdam uh, art calendar, and massive because it, I, every every participant to this uh, calendar got a copy, and I received it in the mail and was a, 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 a very heavy, very heavy object. So I was when I I actually Googled this image, and I was quite su surprised how this person. <laughs> is able to hold it with one hand, because I really, really, really can't. Um, the the uh, Amsterdam art calendar basically shows 365 uh, artists living in, in, the, in Amsterdam who all contributed uh, uh, a piece to the, to, the, to the calendar. And I, I was like, that's a, that's a lot of artists. That's, that's, like, I cannot believe there's 365 good artists in 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 Amsterdam. Do I really want to really want to be part of that? So I thought to myself, I only want I, I will only be part of it if they put my contribution on my birthday. <laughs> so, um, and I basically said like, if you don't put a, if you don't put my contribution on my birthday, it, it won't make any sense. So this is what I did. I googled all the. I simply googled my birthday, and. Um, <laughs> And uh, I am blessed to share a birthday with quite a, um, yeah, quite a, quite a uh, gang. And um, so it's uh, Auguste Rodin is the is the the oldest one, uh, oldest one. My birthday is on November 12th. And Omar, Omar Ryan is that is that how you pronounce it? Um, Omarian. He's the young. He's the he's the youngest. So it seemed it seemed most logic to simply place myself in between um, Megan Mullally and Ryan Gosling. It's, it's <laughs> good good company, I think. And um, I like I like these things. I like I'm complete. I'm very aware of the stupidity of this act, and and I th I somehow. Like play, I like to play with, yeah. You could say it's it's naive, it's it's stupid, but at the same time, I'm just I'm just trying it out. I'm just I just want to see I'm just want to see what it does. I just want to see how how people will react to it. And of course, they did place me on my birthday. So somehow, this silly act worked. It's a good bunch. It's a, it's a it's a ni nice list of people. <laughs> Uh, this is a print I made um, for uh, an art fair in in Amsterdam called uh, Unfair. It's a it's a an art fair for um, young younger younger artists, which always takes place at the time where where a more yeah more um, uh, adult uh, art fair takes place. And this was a print that was given out to. Um, the 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 friends of the friends of the friends of the fair so people who paid a, a little bit more extra uh, to get in got uh, got to choose um, a print and I made this and this simply shows um, a bunch of paintings by uh, Jackson Pollock 
and I I created I created a, a rumor, and um, and um, so it's a collection. It's it's about Jackson Pollock's collection, and it's also it's a, it's a collection of Jackson Pollock's work, and um, of course it's not this is not true, uh, <laughs> but I quite like I, again it's it has a little bit to do with the thing I talked before uh, with uh, the birthday calendar. I I I quite like yeah the stupidity the stupidity of it and the fact that I can somehow use a certain fascination for trivia uh, with my ability to. Uh, lay out to to make things look the way I want them to 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 look. And again, this bottom line, I was just when I when I when I was looking through these images, I was just stunned about how many how how often I I, I pull it off, or how I, I, how often I actually just do it. It's it's st it's strange. I find it quite strange. <laughs> this is a uh, a card I made for the Berlin uh, Book Fair. And it has, it has very much to do with the things that I showed before. It's again a certain kind of mashup of information that, n that does not necessarily have anything to do with one, one another. I'm just trying to see what it does. I'm trying to see how it works. And, and I also like the ability, I, I like the fact that perhaps it doesn't work. Um, the thing is, I don't get paid. I didn't get paid for something like this, so I, it somehow provides me with a. I, I think um, I should take that um, that fact that I don't get paid to yeah give myself a certain kind of freedom and uh, experiment with things and yeah. And I've often said this is the best thing I ever made, but it's, and people say no, but it's not true. This is not the best thing I ever made. But I quite I just kind of like I'm I really um, one of my. One of my um, uh, most like I'm very inspired by the work of uh, Claude Kloski, a French artist who a French artist who makes who actually makes like the the guy on the right. Um, it's I, I ripped out uh, I ripped out a, a page from a porn magazine, so you know what's happening on the on the right page. But I just liked I just liked sort of the. By adding that that Z Z Z, you completely change the context, and I, I quite I just just like kind of like hmm, that, I, I, when I when I made this, I thought like this that that's that's smarter, that's funnier. <laughs> and then we come to this, which maybe if you have if you have visited my website, you've seen. Um, this is an image I found on Google, and uh, years ago. And I had the opportunity opportunity to make a bunch of free postcards, and I could not come up with I could not really come up with anything. So I decided to print this image, um, and I've been really crazy about I've been really crazy about this image. And people ask me that don't you think it's time to change that 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 image on the first page of your website? And I think I think everybody's really right about that. Um, <laughs> But still, I just really enjoy this. I just en enjoy this image, and I enjoy talking about it, and I, I enjoy looking at it, obviously. Um, <laughs> but what I really like about it is this: this is maybe maybe you don't know, or maybe you can't see, but this is Cristiano Ronaldo um, on holiday with his friends. And what I really like about it is that he has the ball; they don't. Um, <laughs> he's in he's in the air, so which somehow makes him. He's fl he's uh, l levitating. Is that the word? He's he's somehow in the air, which somehow makes him look like he's flying. So he is this superhero that you th that you that you, that we all know he is. And what I also really like about this is that his friend, the one with the white shorts, is not so uh, in shape as as he, as as he is. So there's all these things that somehow really sort of underline his position, like this the the, the yeah. The guy, he, the guy that he is, or and I also quite like that the ball is in the right, in the like in the in the top right corner. It's, it's a, it's, it's. I think it's simply a really beautiful image, and and um, and it has nothing to do with the fact that they are wearing uh, that, that they're not wearing their shirts. <laughs> <coughs> um, uh, a new divide is a uh, is a, a lecture. A series that happened in Amst in Amsterdam in Leipzig not so not so long ago, a few months ago, 
And uh, I was invited to talk um, together with um, six, no, with seven, no, uh, six other uh, designers. And it was a series of talks about uh, the, uh, social and, and economic um, issues as a, that you somehow come across with as a designer. And it's it's uh, somehow it's an it's an, an issue that I'm that I'm simply not so not so comfortable with. I don't really know. Yeah, I I find it difficult to somehow position myself in this in this in this issue. And uh, I was asked to make to make um, uh, posters to that, that that would announce uh, announce the event. And so the idea was very the idea is very simple. I simply just cut up all the words, cut up all the names of the speakers, and provide. Uh, I thought that the posters could somehow provide a new way of reading, a new way of looking at these names, these people that um, perhaps you might know. Uh, the 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 event was organized by um, uh, an Austrian um, cura curator, Barbara Steiner, uh, who had done an artist in residency in Amsterdam and collected all these people uh, to talk about this subject that she really wanted to explore. And so this is her, this is her poster. This is the poster of, uh, I made for Rebecca Stephanie. So I, what I'm simply I'm doing, I'm just cutting up the names in different ways. So I'm dividing the names in different ways and I'm putting them back together. The poster for Elisabeth Clement, who runs uh, the Sun City Bookshop in Amsterdam, who has an asterisk, asterisk summer school in Tallinn, in the capital of Estonia, and who is also a graphic designer. And this order, this, and you can, I, I should have put it in a different order, but it doesn't, I, she, won't, she, will, she won't hold it against me. Uh, Stuart Bailey, so I'm just shuffling all, the, all his letters around. Is that called an ana anagram? Radim Peshko, so I, I made a, a rebus with his name. And I thought it was really sort of strange to to make this huge, to use this huge pesto image, <laughs> which is not necessarily a, a very attractive image, but it somehow works. Or, and this is my own, which is I think the most the, the most boring one of this series. And. Um, yeah, maybe it's in, maybe I want to maybe it's interesting to talk about it for a little bit longer. But I'm maybe I'm I'm not so not so uh, comfortable about about the topic of the of the the new divide um, uh, series simply because I don't know I I feel like um, it's very important to me that my work that I I I, I initiated think that I initiate my my own work and that I, that I do things for which I'm paid, commissioned work and self-initiated works go uh, go hand in hand. And that really somehow defines me as a designer, I think, that those things really feed feed off each other. Uh, and I also think that one could not exist if it, if it weren't for the other. So I don't really see this, this idea of the divide to me is not so, um, it does not come so, um, so, so natural, but or it's maybe I'm, I'm yeah. See, the, the the fact that I'm stumbling over my words actually is a is a is a sign that I'm that I'm a little bit uncomfortable about the subject. However, I um, it was an, it was a nice it was a very good and a very inspiring uh, conference both in Amsterdam and in Leipzig. <laughs> um, this is um, a booklet I made a while ago uh, called "Mosquitoes, Elephants, Mouth, and Some More Hills" um, to make a. Um, a mountain of a molehill is a saying that you all probably know, and the same thing, uh, the, the 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 equivalent in Dutch is to make uh, an elephant out of uh, out of a mosquito. So I somehow quite liked that list of four strange words that have nothing to do with each other. But I thought it sounded really, I, I thought it just as I thought it sounded really good. Uh, but it's uh, I stopped uh, making things under the name. Mosquitoes, elephants, mountains, and molehills, mainly because it takes um, maybe it takes me quite a while to type the t the title, and I often I often make um, I type mistakes, and I'm a t I'm a terrible typer. Um, 
but I I like I like to write. I'm not not necessarily uh, a good writer, but I simply I have this I have a text file in which I uh, uh, yeah continue to uh, continue adding uh, things ideas rumors uh, unfinished plots for um, potentially uh, great movies and that um, and that 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 text file bec- uh, became large enough uh, to yeah to, to 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 do something with it to 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 publish and to i just wanted to i wanted, just wanted to try what um, i wa- wanted to see what 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 people would, would think of it just in order to see to give this writing um urge a, a, a stage or a, like a, a certain kind of space. I just wanted to know what, peop- what, what people would think of it. So I made this book. And I really enjoy writing captions to images. I think that if I write a caption to an image, I can somehow appropriate that image and make it my own. So I do that with, with a lot of things, like a lot of images, as you see here. And this publication had a lot of. Uh, I, I, I write down my I write down my dreams, which are, are good. I dream about really good, like really strange good things, and um, so somehow it's worth writing down. And I, I also think that somehow it's worth to publish it um, again for this idea, for the, for the sake of trying it out, seeing what seeing what happens, see what people, like, the idea of. The the possibility of people uh, thinking like this is not my business. Why would I care? I I I like that position. I like to somehow position myself and see what I can do with it. Um, and this is a good example of it somehow. Um, w one three nine the gallery I talked about earlier uh, celebrated is its thirtieth uh, birthday. And all the designers that had worked for the gallery were asked to uh, make a poster announcing the, announcing uh, the birthday. And since it was a coincidence, but that year I uh, I too turned uh, 30 years old, so I decided to uh, combine uh, to combine both uh, parties. So um, the orange layer basically uh, celebrates my birthday. So it's B B B B B uh, Art 30. And the green layer uh, celebrates the W139's uh, birthday, and the the little uh, orange text on the right basically invites you to my birthday. <laughs> uh, but it says, if you know where I live, if you know who I am, but mostly if you know where I live, you're very uh, much invited to uh, party with with me and my friends. <laughs> and um, so these these posters were uh, hung up hung up in the uh, hung up in the city. And um, but it was just it was a party like and like any other year, and uh, which still means that it was quite a, quite a lot of people, but um, like not many strange faces. But I was quite nervous about it. <laughs> so maybe it's interesting to talk a little bit about this idea, this like this voice, this uh, the idea of what uh, what, a, what 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 writing can do for. Uh, a designer's work, uh, for, uh, for my work in this case, I really en- uh, enjoy um, updating my website. Uh, although I don't really do it very, uh, I don't do it frequently, but I enjoy writing about my work. I enjoy sort of surrounding my work with uh, casual observations, with 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 with, with uh, again maybe uh, stupid statements or uh, truisms or. But I, th- I think I'm, 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 I'm just trying. I'm just trying things out. I wanna, I wanna see. I'm, I just wanna see what, what, what my voice, my. Um, it's almost like an alter ego because I, I write quite naive, uh, silly things. I'm, I, I don't, th- I don't think that I'm a silly naive person. But I somehow like to play with that. And on, on my website, uh, uh, my website seems to be a really good platform to, to, yeah surround my, my work uh, or to contextualize my work in a in a somewhat um, yeah playful way um, so he, yeah this is I photograph my I photograph my work when it's being uh, used as ashtrays and this is in Sanserif a bookshop in Amsterdam 
where uh, Rustam, Rustam Terling and I uh, often uh, launch uh, Dark and Stormy. And this was a night where I uh, asked some students of mine to um, make a cocktail, make cocktails and work, uh, work behind the bar. And this is um, another evening uh, in San where we public, where we uh, launched another issue of Dark and Stormy. And in the in the uh, you see uh, two friends of mine uh, talking. Uh, within the back, you see uh, this bench that Forrest Gump uh, sits on on the on the movie poster, and we simply just stretched the the bench so it would become a decorative border around around the around the shop. My birthday invitations, um, quickly, because I think um, uh, two friends in Amsterdam told me to show these, but I think they're old and but they're fun and they're but I saw they're they're, they're an important part of my work, but I don't really do them anymore. I don't really make these over the top invitation uh, invitation for uh, for my birthdays. And it's again, it's important to read. <laughs> I simply have stopped organizing birthday parties. I just, um, I became too busy. Um, I live, I live um, in, um, I live, with, uh, I live with a bunch of flatmates in, in, in Amsterdam, and our our kitchen, <coughs> basically, we have a like the the, the uh, we have a, a bench in the in the kitchen, and if you are if you if you arrive early at the birthday party and you sit on the bench, and more people arrive, you're basically screwed screwed for the rest of the night because you can't really go anywhere. And uh, on on this uh, this night, it was my parents who uh, who uh, paid a surprise visit and of course arrived really early, and uh, sat on the uh, on the bench. And then the kitchen was flooded with people, and they had really nowhere to go. <laughs> so this is the more minimum. This is like the the last invitation I, I made when I turned uh, 33. Um, yeah, maybe you should read it. And I write in, in English because uh, the Rietveld where I studied uh, has a big, um, a big uh, foreign uh, po like population. Is that the right word? There's a lot of foreign students at the Rietveld, and and most like a lot of them still hang around Amsterdam. So. Uh, since 1999, I've been talking like uh, I've been uh, talking English uh, on a, on a very daily basis. So that's why I write all my all my stuff in English. Um, I teach at the uh, academy in The Hague and at the academy in Amsterdam. And when I started teaching, I was uh, still quite young. I was uh, 28, and I was very. I was very excited about teaching. I still am very excited about teaching, but perhaps I was a little bit too excited. So every assignment that I gave the students, uh, I took the opportunity to, to completely uh, like design these assignments, and um, and I, I do that because I can. I do that because I can. I can. I can make things look the way I want. Um, I like I really really I mean it's, this is this might be silly to say but I like designing, <laughs> and um, and uh, so I yeah I, I enjoy that I enjoy that that yeah that that, that that the gift or the idea that I can just make things the way uh, I can make things look the way I, I want to, uh, and especially uh, in in the context of, of of education I think it's important to show students that you can do that that you can. That you can uh, design an email, that you can uh, design a text file, or like these little cards that I made for today that I'm not using at all. Um, they also look kind of. I think they look kind of nice. Um, however, uh, this this was silly. This I did this only for a half a year, and then I switched to these things. I still design my assignments, but I 
I thought this is taking up too much too much of my time. So I'm 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 making these like long paper strips which the students use as bookmarks. They um, um, like a lot of the students still um, start working uh, working out their ideas in their sketchbooks. So they use my assignments as yeah like sort of yeah bookmarks very simple. And I teach the the the, des the, like the, the design class on Monday morning. And um, it's, I'm having, having a really good time. We, we, may, we, we mainly uh, do all kinds of very open, open assignments that have very particular uh, restrictions or quirks or that somehow influence the design process. But it's mostly just talking about, ide talking about ideas and the way they deal with the restrictions. So I'm just showing you a bunch of assignments now. And this is perhaps not the most legible for you all to. <coughs> I simply wanted I wanted the students to uh, enlarge an image to to develop a, a method to enlarge to enlarge images. Um, like a, uh, an analog way. And when I have, when I have talked in, when I have talked enough and I have, I need to come up with something in the afternoon that I, ha I always have this in the back of my uh, agenda that I can always sort of fall back on, like a bunch of simple, silly ideas. This was like a really, really long, really long paper strip with, um, like uh, names um, of artists uh, from an art history book. So I ask everybody to to study those names and to look up a work so they would know which works which work belongs to which artist, and then we and then we just like, drew a few names from a hat, and they had to quickly sketch uh, that that particular work that they had um, uh, looked up within one minute. And at the end of the year, they all had to. Uh, choose one artist, and um, imagine that I um, uh, choose Max Ernst. I would have to ask all my classmates to uh, scan their Max Ernst uh, interpretation, and that would be the material for uh, a, a quick talk about Max Ernst. So they all had they all had these really bad bad drawings of a work of Max Ernst. <laughs> it was really sort of a strange sort of like bad. Um, bad-looking, uh, amateuristic-looking um, uh, art history lecture. So I really, I really, um, I really enjoy making these things, and I, 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 I think that the students also uh, enjoy, yeah, they collect them. That's kind of nice. And it's it's somehow uh, it's it's been quite a it's it's been quite a collection so far, or uh, it's or it's it is becoming quite a collection so far. So it's uh, it would be nice to do something to do something with it one day. Here I ask the students to div to take a, take a look at the format of a lookbook, and to develop a lookbook lookbook of their own. Uh, this is a, uh, a drawing by Sol, Sol Steinberg. Uh, it's called uh, Techniques at a Party. So you see all kinds of different drawing techniques, um, um, drawing a, a, a particular guest at this party. And uh, me and Rustan Söderling uh, used this drawing to uh, as an inspiration for a workshop at the St. Lucas Academy in Ghent, which was called Three Days a Slave which was right uh, after uh, 12 Years a Slave had just won the Oscar for for something. Um, and we basically, we hung up this poster and asked the students to sign up uh, in each category. So they had to write down their name in, in both the typographical jobs and the image jobs. And, um, they, and we asked them to develop um, a handwriting tool, or a special effect tool, or a portrait tool, or a, a, a ge geometrical shaped frame tool, and they had to do that within 45 minutes, and then present those 
um, and those tools to each other, like you're really se like you're selling something on the market that says like um, three for the price of one, or like uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then they came up with all these things, all these sort of experiments. And then the next day we showed them this poster, and we asked, and we basically told them, okay, now y you all have to use each other's um, tools to remake all these images, so remake all remake all the images that you see on the poster. So these images somehow represent a big bunch of like image icons from the last hundred years. And our idea our idea was to make some kind of book that shows an overview of of these of these images of these icons uh, using these tools using and and then they made this book. Um, so this is Mickey Mouse. That's Jim Morrison on your right. The um, um, what's that? Oh, I can't really I don't know what the, what the Metro Golden Meyer uh, logo. So they really had to use each other's uh, skills in order to remake those remake those those icons. And that's the the back cover. And Gent is, Gent is uh, the academy in Gent is um, is it's it's really really it's kind of it's kind of close to 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 Amsterdam. It's it's a very different it's a very different academy, but it's run by a bunch of a bunch of guys that are doing a really good job. And it's 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 nice to have such a di completely different academy uh, than than the Rietveld or the KBK so close by. So it was a very it was a very yeah it was a very nice trip. It was a very it's a very nice city and. Um, those three day, three or four day workshops are are actually quite intense, and it's quite it's quite nice to simply just be able to make a book at uh, in in such a short amount of time. This is us. It's me. <laughs> it's me and Rustan. <coughs> um, uh, I was working the 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 gallery that I uh, showed work for, work of before W one three nine. I was. Um, I had a job there too. I was working as a guard, uh, looking over the exhibition, and um, my colleagues upstairs at the, at the office knew that I somehow had this. I I can't really I can't really stand stand reggae. It's some uh, it's it, it does something to me. So they um, um, so they uh, gave they brought me a sandwich. That had a, a thick layer of butter on it, and with uh, chocolate sprinkles, they uh, um, basically uh, st made this stupid s statement. <laughs> um, Rustan and I were asked to uh, we were asked to uh, uh, take part in a, at a uh, intervention series at the Paradiso, uh, the same venue that uh, hosted. Uh, uh, if I were sculpted, but then again, no uh, event that I talked about in the beginning of the talk. And the idea was very simple: uh, Can you make an in, uh, can you make an intervention in the space uh, or on the outside of the space uh, during um, a regular um, a regular uh, night? So uh, our our idea was to uh, take over the like you, you can see here on the facade. They hang. Uh, this is uh, where they hang. All the posters that advertise or that announce all the upcoming events. So what we did was we made a, uh, a certain we made a format in which we laid out all the all the uh, typographical information that you read on a poster that you read on the poster, and we uh, put it in this reggae flag. So all the so all the uh, upcoming. Concerts suddenly become reggae events. So <laughs> there's Heather Nova on the, the the third poster that you can see. All the information that the poster reads suddenly is placed in this reggae reggae flag. And what is what is simply what I what I really liked about it is that it provide that it suddenly gives this, gives the building this kind of uh, decorative uh, banner. Uh, that is, yeah, the, the 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 colors of that of that flag are so re recognizable. So, it really s represents reggae in that case, and um, you, we somehow just like that that 
that, that takeover. Um, I met Rustan in uh, 2010 when I, uh, I w when I was working f uh, when I just uh, I got a job for Puma. We had to uh, or I had to make a, a bunch of shop displays and a bunch of fanzines, and I thought Puma that's probably a really big job and uh, probably uh, going to probably going to come with a an impossible. A deadline, so I thought let's let's ask someone to help out, and I liked his work. I liked his graduation work, and he seemed like a fun guy, because uh, he was always out and I was always having a really good time with his friends. So I thought let's just get let's get let's get to know this guy a little bit better, and we uh, start. He he helped out, and then we made a bunch of fanzines for Puma, which in this case shows a a, a, a punk fanzine. And then we liked the format of these fanzines, uh, which were a very simple, like a, a paper folded in, in two, uh, and they fitted a lot of information. We were quite surprised about how much information they would actually, um, how, how, how much information it, it could contain. So we exploited this, we wanted to exploit it a little bit more, and we came up with uh, Dark and Stormy. Uh, again, from the same, Thing is, I talked before that, yeah, I like to I like to write. I like to sort of keep track of my thoughts, my ideas, my dreams, the things I hear, the, the yeah, the things things that we talk 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 about, and try to f try to somehow for formulate uh, a, a a place for those. Uh, try to find a way to make them communicative and uh, and share them with uh, a larger crowd. And the thing is that uh, he does he does too. Rustan, um, uh, yeah, he he writes stuff too. And so we came up with Dark and Stormy. And the issue the issue on the left, the orange issue is the first one that we made uh, commissioned by a Dutch uh, publisher, Onomatope, who wanted us to to um, yeah to to make Dark and Stormy as some kind of uh, extra a little extra thing that you would get if you would order a lot of books. So it was almost like, it was supposed to be almost like a souvenir or like a little like a little gift. Um, but then after after we, we, we made this first issue, we decided to uh, to uh, part uh, on the Matepe and Dark and Stormy, and we would continue on our own terms, on our own sort of frequency. So the image on the, the the yellow one is the is the is the second issue, and what I like about Dark and Stormy is that it's it, it somehow almost makes it sort of designs itself. Um, it has a very simple uh, grid system. It it has three columns. This is a post uh, an invitation for the second issue. This is the th uh, this is the uh, the third. And this is the poster. I'm, I'm going over this a little bit quick, um, but it somehow it, it, it almost sort of designs itself. Uh, the, the column on the left, that the the, the 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 most narrow column, is uh, is um, a column for 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 like more quicker things, for lists, for for like really short stories. And then the column on the right mostly features one longer article, and then the 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 middle column is used to uh, develop a more expressive typo typography, and um, and somehow whatever happens, or wh whatever we come up with, also results in a way to um, uh, write the titles inside the magazine. So in this, in the case of the green, like we we came up with this more uh, rebus. Do you know what a rebus is? Is that a right word? Um, we came up with this kind of re uh, rebus kind of yeah typography or uh, style, and um, we just tried to uh, apply the same thing uh, with the titles of the different articles. Um, and we always painted on a different color. So this is the third issue uh, that you that you saw a quick image of bef before with uh, the Forrest Gump. Um, decorative um, um, wallpaper. And this is a poster that we made for the event. For the event. So, 
so it's it's a it's a big deal to me that I can that, that we can that, that we can make that we can make dark and stormy it's um I really enjoy those those uh, those uh, typographical experiments that we do on the cover and and I I like that yeah we are sort of yeah we are simply in, in we can we can do whatever we want it's 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 our own little fanzine it's very simple it's just six or ten pages it's really not much but it's really stuffed with information with stuff with stories uh, self um, self like re rewrite things ourselves we quote uh, existing articles and what Rustan is really quite good at is he um, combines text, he finds a, uh, a piece from this particular source and he combines it with another story and he somehow yeah, knits it together by do, like, uh, uh, like, yeah, writing something in, in the middle. And what happens, basic, what happens next is that you create a certain, that you create uh, an unclear, um, yeah, st like, uh, no one really knows who the, who the who the author of the of the piece uh, is anymore. So what we do is from everybody everybody who contributes uh, is contributing anonymous anonymously. So all the uh, the names of the uh, the authors are deleted, and they are put in a long list uh, put together in a, in a long list in the back. So our idea basically was that somehow Dark and Stormy would read as one sort of tone of voice, which is which it obvious, obviously uh, doesn't, but we quite liked that, yeah, that there was an absence of uh, one particular uh, person sort of signing the whole, signing the whole thing. <coughs> and to each, uh, to each, uh, for each, each issue we make, we make something extra that, that we show on the, on the, on the day of the launch. Which we mostly launch in uh, in Amsterdam in the in the bookshop of uh, Peter Verbeek and Elisabeth Clement uh, called San Serif. It's in the in the Red Light District in the in the center of the city. And the uh, the issue, the green issue I showed you before, was um, paid by um, an anonymous uh, sponsor. It was a friend of mine, um, and he was very particular about really wanting to be anonymous and. Both uh, Rustan and I had just seen that Curb Your Enthusiasm episode that is about Ted Danson or Larry David being like, anonymous and it's unclear who's who. And so we just sort of made this sort of flat uh, installation referring to both our anonymous sponsor and the, and the Curb uh, episode. This is the uh, last issue. Um, which is an image-based issue uh, that was uh, launched um, Actually, quite a yeah, five five months ago or something. And here we asked uh, a, quite a big bunch of people to to contribute an image and to write a caption to to an uh, to an image to somehow figure out what the, what the caption can do to an image. How can you appropriate something? How can you make it your own? And um, so it's a very it's a very it's it's again quite a dense. Uh, uh, issue of Dark and Stormy, full of images of uh, yeah, quite a quite a big variety of people, mostly artists and designers, but it's also a, uh, journalists and and uh, a guy who does the production for Star Wars. It's just kind of a, a, a really, I, li I like that I like the list of people a lot somehow. And we um, so we for this issue we made an empty issue uh, we made an empty version of the the blue um, uh, paper and on which you could actually find out who did what uh, the weight of color is a, is an is an identity I'm I, I designed um, quite a while uh, two three years ago um, and the weight of color was a, a lecture and a movie program about uh, color about the absence of color about how today uh, we only only think about about color uh, in association with the op the object the color the uh, the object that the color has is that am I, am I saying I'm a, like we only think of um, lemons being uh, yellow we don't think of the color yellow we just think of lemons so it was I somehow dealt with that dealt, dealt with that issue of the yeah, the absence of color or so my idea was to make a color book image uh, 
um, kind of design that that lacked uh, any any bit of color, but those um, uh, blotches of, of paint falling onto the uh, framework, uh, this kind of transparent framework, so that so that would somehow provide a, a hunch of color or uh, I tried to fill in those uh, paint drops with images that that also sort of play with an absence of color or sort of an, 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 impossi an impossibility of color, like a, like a CD, like how it has no color, but how it has all the colors in the world. So this is another poster and a bunch of postcards. And another poster. Um, this is uh, this is uh, again uh, an exhibition for the new institute in Rotterdam. Here you can see uh, um, like almost it's, it's almost like a molehill. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a building or it's a pavilion designed by a, a search architects, a Dutch architect firm, and this this hill is. Um, so covered in grass, as you can see. But once you go inside, you enter this very uh, plastic, uh, artificial-looking dome uh, that has a, like a very utopian, uh, tropical garden garden in the middle. And I've, uh, I was asked to um, come up with uh, um, a visual a visual identity for the exhibition to make posters and booklets and and flyers. And I really liked the clash that. Um, I really like the clash that those those worlds made as soon as you walked into the uh, in, into that pavilion. Um, it's important to tell. In this case, I want to tell you something about the identity of the new institute, which is designed by Marie by Marie Moren. And she has developed uh, this. La she calls it a label. And uh, she really wants. Uh, she. Uh, uh, gives a lot of Dutch, mostly Dutch designers, the opportunity to work for her, uh, to work for at the new institute, and she asks to incorporate this label, which maybe you've seen in the in the previous thing of the one-to-one -one, uh, period rooms. But the label is quite he it's quite, it's kind of a heavy uh, yeah, thing. It's a kind of a heavy part of the uh, layout, and she really wants it to be. Almost like a label, like like you have a label in the back of your shirt, like something that is that has nothing to do with whatever the designer com comes up with. And I quite I quite like it because what I uh, a struggle that maybe uh, some of you uh, recognize is is dealing with log dealing with logos. Dealing with logos is never really never really a fun thing. It's you, you cannot really escape it. So you always sort of have to sort of like an inner battle, like what, what what will I do with the logos? Will I sort of put them in the corner, or how do I, how do I do it? So in this case, there is really no escape. This logo is so present that it in this uh, in both in the period rooms and uh, in this case really um, yeah inspires the the logo in this case inspires the design. So um, in the case of the uh, Utopia. A new pavilion. It's very much about Moraine's, Moraine's sort of uh, presence, and it's about mine. So what I, what I basically did, is I zoned off my space with tape. In this case, my, I call my my topography tape. In this case, so it's very clear like what is hers and what is mine. And just like in the in the in the pavilion, I I grow uh, I, I grow. Uh, a garden, a very artificial-looking garden. I really wanted wanted it to yeah, look fake, or I wanted it to stay away from anything um, natural-looking. So I I stayed away from using greens and browns, although <laughs> this is quite quite brown. Um, so it's very much about it's very much about defining um, my space and her space, so the institute space and the exhibition space, or the, the the theme of the exhibition. And these, I made a bunch of posters that were not offset printed, but they were simply, um, they were dig digital prints. So 
I really got to make a lot of different color var variations, which in this case really uh, added to the idea. So you could really, so the composition always stayed the same and the colors were always different, sort of underlining this idea of a fake garden. This is a small brochure I made. And this is like if you if you unfold the thing, then you get then you get just um, just um, like this kind of leaf pattern thing. This is a picture of a band uh, called Total Control from um, um, Melbourne in Australia, and they um, it's the guy on the left, James, uh, contacted me uh, a while ago if I wanted to make a poster poster for their uh, tour in uh, the US and that I, I tried a bunch of different things and that, ne that they although they gave me like, all the freedom in the world they never liked liked what I did <laughs> um, but they sort of liked me and they they canceled the poster uh, job and they gave me another another job and that was to make uh, the cover for their the, the record sleeve for their new uh, album and that that too wasn't an easy process because again they uh, dismissed a lot of my a lot of my ideas a lot of my proposals and then one day I came to the st to the office and I checked uh, Facebook and there I saw that something had happened something had happened in the Vatican um, the Pope had released these two peace doves and they were immediately attacked by a seagull and a, a black crow and and I was mesmerized I thought this was amazing and um, yeah just I was just I was sort of blown away by the incredible symbol incredible symbolism of this 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 um, this happening and uh, how the, the the Catholic Church is somehow attacked by whatever um, the devil or uh, ISIS or whatever whatever you want whatever you want to call it that's really horrible <laughs> what I'm saying um, but I just I, what I wanted to do is to somehow um, highlight the incredible um, beauty of this this moment or this 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 uh, event, and I wanted to show. Yeah, but I, it's om I, when I when I saw it, I almost I almost really couldn't be couldn't believe it. It seemed too good to be true. It was such a so I I had just watched um, a series of documentaries called Contacts. You can see them on on YouTube, and it's um, it's a series of um, short documentaries where. Uh, photographers uh, talk about their contact sheets, and um, so you, and then you see them like circling. Uh, you see the photographers circling contact sheets, and you see them uh, give the contact sheets uh, to the printers or lithographers. And so it, it almost so the way that they sketch and write on these um, contact sheets almost seemed like a very spe specific language. Uh, so a language known to photographers, and I thought it was quite. I thought it was really beautiful, the way that um, yeah, photographers sort of yeah talk about their work or like um, deal with, deal with their with their um, with their material, and I liked how yeah it shows it shows how how makeable or how how makeable an, an image can be, and that somehow felt quite. Uh, that somehow really uh, uh, worked worked well with this image, so I simply tried to make it more pretty than it already is by by framing it, by suggesting like by suggesting a, a different kind of cropping. And uh, the, ba the the band's the band name and the band the album's uh, title somehow also deal deal with this. Um, that the I think that total control and typical system is a very uh, contradicting uh, uh, collection of words, so I I thought that somehow that that, that that would work. This is the back. Uh, 
reading all the all, all the lyrics to the album and a short article written by uh, by James. And this is the the record itself. It's very yellow. It's not so yellow. Um, this is the last thing I want to talk about, um, and it's a very important pro it's a very important project to me. It's called uh, Success and Uncertainty, and um, it's a project I did together with Sandra Kassener, who's a graphic designer uh, in Amsterdam, with who I uh, currently share a studio with. Uh, in 2010, we applied to uh, we applied for an artist and residency in Cairo, in uh, in Egypt, and um, we got we got it we got it, we got in, and uh, we were supposed to uh, travel there on the 28th of January which was the exact date, uh, which was the date that uh, the riots in uh, Tahrir uh, Square started. Uh, the Egyptians wanted um, Hosni, Hosni Mubarak to uh, resign, to, st to step down. And um, so uh, all flights, all flights were, were, cance were, were cancelled. So we, we, could not, uh, we could not travel to, to Egypt. Which was uh, everybody was very happy about it. My parents were very happy that I would not go, because it seemed a very un, uh, unstable uh, situation. But you, you, you might know the feeling that if you are about to leave on holiday, and if someone tells you if someone tells you you can't go, then that's a really frustrating feeling. So you really want to go. You want you want you want to get out of there. You want you're like mentally ready to I don't know to take off and to uh, start this adventure. Um, but we couldn't go because there were no flights, and um, so um, I had cancelled my. I had uh, I had found someone to rent my apartment, and I had no no work anymore. So I had to come up with all kinds of solutions for all these problems. And um, we were just um, hooked to the t television and to um, uh, Twitter and and well, not Twitter, Facebook mostly, uh, just to try to get a, a hold of. Uh, Try to get an idea of what was going on, and uh, mostly trying to figure out like when can we go? How, how can we do this? How can we deal with the situation? And what will this do to our artists and artists and residency program? So four months, four weeks, sorry, four weeks later, uh, the, si the situation had calmed down, and the president had resigned, and we we left. We 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 took the plane to to Cairo. And what happened then? Um, was actually was was compl complicated to to us. It was complicated to me uh, because we arrived in in a city. We arrived in a country that was so occupied with other things, with, with, which was so occupied with their own um, yeah euphoria, their uh, their their own sort of uh, liberation and celebration, and there was simply no and understand uh, which which something we both really understood. There was no space for to Dutch graphic designers wanting to do their their project in 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 Cairo. Everybody was still at the square, at the Tahrir Square, and yeah, celebrating, protesting, um, trying to see how far they could take this idea of protest. And uh, there seemed just no no um, uh, yeah no space really for us. But we wanted to go to this. We wanted to go to the square. We wanted to be involved. We wanted to get to know the people. We wanted to know. We wanted to get to know the situation, and uh, we wanted to try to figure out how can we get in. Like where can where do we fit in? What can we do? What can we say? Um, we were really con we were confronted with um, questions like, what are we doing here? Is this uh, is this our revolution? Uh, can we can we um, mingle ourselves in the in the discussion uh, and what if we don't what if, what what if we just stick to our initial plan and continue what we want to do like how do people uh, like how do you look how how would that be uh, received and and basically we thought that would that would be ignorant ignorant too so we were kind of torn between uh, different feelings like is it our business or what if we do our own thing. So that created a certain kind of insecurity towards our stay in Cairo. 
and we used our contacts, we used our time there to sketch, to visualize things, to, to uh, collect images, to collect information, to collect news, uh, to we try to figure out how then how how does the news travel? How does how do you know that there's something going on in the square? That uh, how do you how do you know if someone is uh, taken uh, prison or like how how, do, how does how does news travel in Egypt at, in in a time like this? And we try to visualize this in many different ways <coughs> until the time that the resident residency was uh, coming to an end, and we decided to take three weeks. Um, in which we would um, apply all our experiments, all our um, discoveries uh, onto uh, uh, a poster. Uh, Sandra is a, a very different designer than, than I am. She's, uh, she's a researcher. She, she is um, she's much more an analytical than me. Uh, and she sort of takes her time um, to uh, come up with a form. And I'm perhaps a little bit more intuitive and um, we tried to we were looking for ways to uh, collaborate to sort of combine that and we actually decided not to we decided to just sort of uh, put things on top of each other I'll show you how that how, how we did that and uh, we decided to make it within that stretch of three weeks we decided to make a poster each day um, design it send it to print and hang it up and you can see uh, next to the, like on top of the um, the green el electric electricity booth, you see a light box uh, in which we hung uh, a poster every day. The funny thing about this picture is that when we hung our first light box, the the electricity booth was not green. There was not there was no uh, the wall was not painted red. There was no bricks. There were, it was just a a, a gray sort of a dull looking wall but we suddenly perhaps the people from the this the food stand on, on the on the left felt some some kind of competition and decided to sort of take all like to claim their space so slowly but surely uh, our our uh, spectacular looking light box uh, blended in with uh, this even more spectacular looking uh, hot dog stand um so every day um we would make a po we would make uh, a, a poster and pick it up at the coffee shop, um, not so far from our house, and then we would go to the we would go to the gallery, and we would yeah I would climb up on this on uh, on this green thing, and somehow that 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 act of hang taking down the light box and hanging up an, a new one became quite a a, uh, a performance and it, and it uh, caused a lot of fuss and people came to check us out and look at look at our posters and try to read them and uh, we, we would explain we would explain what 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 today's poster w um, was about which was a very important moment for us because uh, we were we we were actually quite aware that the posters were not so accessible not so readable so the conversation that we had with the locals was very important and they really those conversations really inspired uh, the next poster we, we would make uh, the day after. So here you can see um, uh, uh, a poster, um, number three in this case. And so the, I don't know if it's very readable, but very clear, but uh, the newspaper grid in the back is Sandra's layer. So she would create a, a newspaper uh, format in which you could always uh, pu uh, uh, post or place uh, articles that she read or that she wrote herself or that she collected or, or like interviews that she had with people and I would react on it with a more visual layer or a more yeah I don't know yeah, with more more image ima ima more image based uh, more yeah, layer and we, yeah, we really wanted to, um, we had no uh, intention of being, uh, sort of taking up a, a, an, a, an acti activist role. We really wanted to, um, we really wanted to be journalists. We really wanted to uh, be, we wanted, to, we really wanted to show 
that we were that we are graphic designers who happen to be there at that particular time um, in uh, in the history of the Egyptian um, in, in the history of of Egypt. So that somehow came with like a, a very a very uh, a big diversity of of, of subjects. And in this case, this is a very sort of like simple and silly pr problem. So we just try to visualize something new every day. Sandra collect, collected uh, a lot of a lot of images from newspapers all over the all over the world um, that showed that, that used the same image that used the same uh, phot photograph that you can see. Um, here it's like that's always that uh, the girl lifted up on the shoulders of of other people um showing a very sort of um victorious sort of um mob or <coughs> this image is um <coughs> we, this is an article that Sandra put together of of uh, of newspaper clippings of men waiting men men trying to somehow yeah it, it showed these it showed a certain kind of insecurity from these polit politicians sort of with their hands to the face it showed uh, as if they also don't know what, what was going on and what, what is next and i was working on a really uh, old computer at the time so i, I often had this uh, spinning of a rainbow colored ball on on my on my so that also showed that also somehow um, became a, uh, a metaphor for for waiting or insecurity. So this is a uh, this is how the exhibition on the inside looked. It was a, a very sort of modest, uh, humble pr uh, presentation where we hung up all the posters. We hung up one each day. And uh, a year later, um, we were asked to uh, show all the posters in in an exhibition in exhibition space in Amsterdam. And uh, we we managed to uh, borrow. A, um, a big bunch of uh, light boxes from um, Mares in Maastricht, in the south of the Netherlands. So we hung up all the Arabic uh, posters in the light boxes and all the ones in English, we hung them up in, on, on the wall. Um, so you had these two different ways of looking at, at the work. And around the time of the exhibition, of the exhibition, we presented this 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 publication, the backup of the of the of the posters. We always wanted to make a book. Uh, we were we were quite aware of the fact that some of these posters are, yeah, they're not so they're not not these posters are not always so easy to read. They're quite sort of cluttered with information, and sometimes my layer sort of. Sometimes my layer blocked up, blocked off um, a big uh, part of uh, Sandra's article. So uh, we always had this idea to like, w once we get back to Amsterdam, we want to make a book, we want to make a publication that somehow shows more background information on information on the project. So that this is what we uh, managed to do in this book. So it again shows all the posters, the Arabic ones and the uh, the English ones, and it also reads a bunch of articles that we collected and that we wrote ourselves, and it explains certain kind of design steps or yeah provides more uh, provides more more um, background information on on the whole project and the time that we were there. Here you can really see um, Sandra's layer being separated from mine. Um, this is something that we did last summer in, in Amsterdam when we were asked to show um, an up. We were basically asked to show the uh, success and uncertainty posters again, but we felt like 
we felt like doing something else. We felt that the the, the format that we had created um, uh, was really could could really um, be uh, reused. It could really somehow use an, um, be uh, easily be update, updated. And um, so we simply used um, the, the, the more later, um, more recent uh, um, news uh, news stories to uh, yeah, write a new article, write a new newspaper, to make a new newspaper cover. And we used uh, we used um, the old posters that we made in Cairo as some kind of backdrop. And again, it's this idea of the bottom line that um, we just c I cut out these big round chunks out of the out of the newspaper that you see here, and I just made them fall to the bottom of the of the fr of the frame. <coughs> so it's again this this idea of a certain uh, um, um, uh, presence of a three dimensionality really sort of made made flat made flat again again. And then uh, these are a bunch of a bunch of posters that we made. For uh, the Tipo Yanchi uh, uh, top topography biannual in in Seoul in uh, South Korea, so these again show uh, updates, news updates with different articles that have nothing to do with Egypt, that have nothing to do with to uh, Arab uh, Arab Spring, but that somehow provide a new way of yeah looking at. Looking at the news, or sort of the the, the destruction of the destruction of the news, or maybe it's a bit vague. And um, that's 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 it. Actually, thank you very much.